Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Cooking with Jeff, the 3D Chef. Today I'm going to be making a wonderful recipe for you filmed in VR 180 Virtual Reality 3D video. This video is best watched in your Virtual Reality headset, such as an Oculus Quest 2, but you can also follow along on your computer or phone if you prefer. Today I'm going to be making a pasta with an Alfredo sauce but instead of using cream, I'm going to be using cauliflower. It is possible to make this recipe entirely vegan if you use margarine and omit the chicken broth or add vegetarian uh, veggie broth instead. Uh, but today I'll be making slightly non-vegan. I'll be using real butter and chicken broth with the cauliflower. It's a bit lighter than making an Alfredo with cream, but it is very delicious and uh, let's get started. So if we look down here, we can see the ingredients for today's recipe. I've got a 454 gram box of Rotini pasta, Barilla brand. I do like Barilla, it's quite affordable. It's made in Italy and it is available in Canada where I am located. I've got about one or two tablespoons of butter. I'm using salted butter because that's what I have in the house. But if you prefer a low salt recipe, you could use unsalted. I have three garlic cloves, which I've minced. And I've got a quarter teaspoon of salt. Again, if you prefer a saltier recipe, you could add up to two teaspoons, but I definitely prefer a bit lower on salt diet, so I only have a quarter teaspoon of salt here. Back there, I've got one head of cauliflower, washed and chopped. And I've got one head of spinach, chopped as well and washed before I wa chopped it. And I've got one cup of chicken broth. Again, you could use vegetarian broth or veggie broth if you prefer. And you could also substitute the butter for margarine or olive oil if you prefer. So to cook today, I'll be using the stove. I've got a pot there, which I'm gonna be just boiling the pasta according to the directions of the box. And I've also got an instant pot here, which I'll be using for making the cauliflower Alfredo sauce. The first step I'm gonna do is turn on my instant pot onto saute mode, so push the saute button and make sure it's set at normal, not high or low, and it will beep and turn on to saute mode. To the pot, I'm gonna add my butter so the butter will start melting in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Meanwhile, I've got a pot on the stove which I'm gonna be uh, boiling some water. You can see over here that I've added a lot of water and I've added some salt to the water. Now I'm going to turn this on high to start boiling that water. Meanwhile our butter is starting to melt. You can see here it's starting to melt in the pot and I'll just let it keep warming up until that butter is all completely melted. So the butter is all melted so I'm going to add my garlic and saute for just about 30 seconds, so a short time. You don't need to over saute the garlic. Give the garlic a bit of a stir in the butter. Set a timer for 30 seconds. This is where the garlic starts to release its oils and it smells really good. Keep stirring the pot so the garlic doesn't burn. That's been 30 seconds. Now, basically just dump in your cauliflower into the pot. Give that a stir. Add my one cup of chicken broth. And if you're going to be adding salt, you need to add the salt now. Give it a bit of a stir. I've chopped the cauliflower up into smaller bits so it'll be easier to blend later. Next, I'm going to wipe up the rim of the Instant Pot to remove any liquid around the edge so it'll seal better. And for the Instant Pot lid, make sure your sealing ring is set in place and that you have a sealing dial on top that's ready to go and close up the lid. Now turn it off saute mode. You want to put it on manual pressure cook 
and set the time at 6 minutes. And turn off the keep warm setting. The reason we want to turn off the keep warm setting is because after the 6 minutes are up, we would like to do a natural pressure release for 10 minutes. And we don't need the pot to stay warm because we're going to be removing it right after those 10 minutes are up. Um, keep warm setting is useful if you're going to be away when it finishes and you want to keep it at a safe temperature for some time until you get you're able to tend to the pot. Our pot of water is boiling now. So I'm going to dump in the box of rotini pasta. And give that a stir. This water is boiling, so be very careful. The directions on the box here say for authentic al dente pasta, boil for seven minutes, stirring occasionally. For tender pasta, boil an additional minute. So I will be doing a seven minute timer on this. And after seven minutes, we'll test the pasta and see if it is done. And if it's not, we'll just cook it a bit longer. Our pasta is now finished. After the pot had finished boiling and I tasted the pasta to make sure that it was the right texture, I used a colander to drain the pot and then I put the pasta back in the pot and drizzled it with some olive oil. So now you can see that the pasta is all done and it's ready and it's just staying warm in there. Uh, because I'm going to be eating this dish tomorrow, I'm going to be putting this pasta, letting it cool a little bit and then putting it into a plastic container and popping it in the fridge because I'm going to eat that tomorrow. With regards to the Instant Pot, after it finished its cooking cycle 10 minutes ago, it beeped and it shut off because we turned off the keep warm setting. And I've let it sit for about 10 minutes to release some of the pressure naturally. But what we're going to do now is release the rest of the pressure the rest of the way by turning the valve at the top of the Instant Pot. The first thing I'm going to do is unplug the Instant Pot from the wall. And then I'll move the Instant Pot onto the cool stove. Make sure the stove is not hot when you do this. Just underneath the fan. I'll turn the fan on. And then I will just release the valve by pushing the knob. And the Instant Pot will, all the remaining steam will come out of the Instant Pot and it will return to normal pressure. The valve on the top of the Instant Pot has dropped down, so I'm going to move the Instant Pot back off the stove. I generally don't like to keep it on the stove because it is a bit dangerous, especially if your stove is hot and you don't want to burn the bottom of the Instant Pot. It's not safe. It's just made of plastic. So I'll move it back here. Next thing I'm going to do is just open the lid of the Instant Pot and make sure when you open it, you open it away from you so the steam doesn't hit you in the face. And give it a bit of a shake so that the drips of water don't land on your feet. And I'll carry this over to the sink. So I moved the Instant Pot lid over to the sink and now you can see inside the pot, the cauliflower has been nicely cooked. It's very soft and at this point what I would do is I would stir it up and then after I stir it up, I would use a hand blender immersion blender to blend the sauce into a very creamy alfredo like sauce um, but right now our son is sleeping so the immersion blender is quite loud so I'm going to be actually doing this blending tomorrow and I'm not going to be showing a video of it but basically what you do is you just mix it up and give it a blend with the immersion blender or you can put it into a regular blender if you like and blend it up and then you can add the spinach I could add the spinach right now, but I'm actually going to leave the spinach to later. The idea is that after you, um, tomorrow when I'm going to heat this up, I'm going to warm up this cauliflower, pop it in an immersion blender or hand blender, and then after it's warm again, I will add the spinach and let the spinach wilt into the sauce. And that will be a nice sauce to put on our pasta. So pretty much that's the entire recipe. The remaining steps are just to blend this with the immersion blender and add the spinach and then you can serve it with the pasta that you've made. Side dish you can add of course, you can add other vegetables or um, a protein if you like as well. 
So that is the recipe. I uh, look forward to sharing with you some photos of the final product. I will take some photos of it, which I'll share later in the end of this video. And I hope you enjoy it. It's very easy to make. I have several other videos where I make the same recipe, but this particular one I did in 3D 180 VR. So if you watch along on a virtual reality headset, let me know what it looks like. How does the experience of cooking in 3D work for you? And for more recipes, please visit me at jeffmobile.com, Jeff with a G, or Jeff Mobile on YouTube. And please subscribe and please leave a comment. I know if you're watching in VR, you won't be able to leave a comment. I don't think the VR clients allow commenting in VR, but please give it a like, a thumbs up, and do subscribe. And I'll be happy to bring you many more 3D cooking videos in the future, as well as other 3D videos using VR 180 technology. It's, it's amazing technology to explore this new era of filmmaking with stereoscopic cameras. And I look forward to sharing much more with you in the future. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.